it's not the strongest person. It's not the smartest person. It's the person that basically has no quit, that has the utmost amount of resiliency in what they can endure. And I think that that's what the sport of bodybuilding kind of encompasses. Welcome to episode 100 of the supersetyourlife.com podcast. Make sure you listen all the way through because we have a really exciting giveaway at the end of this episode. You don't want to miss it. Three giveaways as a matter of fact. (laughs) Yeah. So welcome to the supersetyourlife.com podcast, your weekly dose of entertainment, inspiration, and education to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym. Let's go. And you're definitely going to want to stick around until the very end after you listen to the first five minutes of what... Dr. Jamie has to say because this conversation is absolutely life-changing and absolutely perfect for episode 100. Yeah. And uh, even more reason to celebrate. So let's get into two client reviews really, really quick so that we can get into this interview even faster. Yeah. All right. First one we have is Penny in Melbourne, Australia. Um, She just said, I stalked Colt for a while to make sure that he would be a good fit. He's personable, meticulous, and works with you to ensure your plan is fully customized to your life. For a a self-confessed control freak, I needed this. No cookie cutters here. Yeah, she's awesome. And then our next one is Leah, who is in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so we're just going to play a quick little audio excerpt from a, com- from a coaching conversation that we have on our mobile app. Everything that we do is online as far as coaching and personal training goes because obviously we are on opposite ends of the planet. So yeah. we have <laughs> never met either of these ladies before. <laughs> yeah. But uh, gosh, just uh, they've really become a joy in our lives, haven't mm-hmm. they? So they're like, they're like family. Everybody that we train is like family. You know, our, our approach is very hands-on. Uh, for coaching inquiries, you can text us at 206-743-1346 and discuss your aesthetic goals, your health goals. We got you. We got your back. Here is Leah from the United Kingdom. I was just driving home and I was like, I can't believe this has happened. Like, I'm actually getting a proper bodybuilding program going on. I've got a proper coach who's all the way over in America. And like, I just, I didn't expect that at all. You know, I just, I can't thank you enough for reaching out to me. You know, it, it means everything to me. Thank you so much, Leah and Penny. Appreciate your kind words. And we're really excited about your guys' journey in the next few weeks. Absolutely, yeah, Leah, you are gonna have an absolutely phenomenal physique. You, oh my gosh, you're off to such a great start. and. Um, let's see, she's scheduled for, uh, she's on a lean bulk right now, a lean carnivore bulk. It's my favorite way to bulk personally. So that's what we do. It's what we teach. It's what we happen to specialize in. We get asked every now and then I, I want to compete, but do I have to eat keto? I'm like, no, actually most of the people that we train are not keto or, or meat based. Um, and if they are bodybuilders, then, you know, one size doesn't fit all, but, uh, yeah. So we're doing a lean lean bulk through January and February, and then we're going to get her ready for a show sometime next summer. And we'll see where you're at too. That might be kind of around the time that you're ready, but uh, no no rush on either of those. So lots of exciting things happening. Uh, Yeah. Coaching inquiries. You can text coaching to 206-743-1346. There's also a link in the show notes below for our coaching consultations. Other than that, Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the interview right now with Dr. Jamie Seaman. Last thing before we get into the video, we're asking a big favor from you. This has been working beautifully. So if you would please think of someone you care about that would benefit from this video, go ahead and smash that like button, click the share button and text this video to them. That would mean the world to us. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more exciting content from School Bells TV because our team has lots of meat and lots of muscle coming your way. And I promise you won't want to miss it. When you hit the subscribe button, you'll see a bell icon pop up. You want to click that too. So you're notified every time we release a new video. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to us. Every like share and subscription helps our channel grow and supports our family's hard work. So thank you so much for doing your part too. That's all we ask. God bless you. And please enjoy this video. 
What's going on, everybody? We got Dr. Fit and Fabulous. That is Jamie Seaman, who is a ketogenic women's physique competitor. She is Mrs. Nebraska of the year 2020, a board certified CGN, board certified ketogenic nutrition specialist, a wife and mother of three girls. Can you believe all that? <laughs> This lady is passionate about preventative medicine. She has overcome weight gain, fatigue, low thyroid, hormone imbalance, prediabetes, basically everything on the planet. This lady has recently competed at the NPC IFBB Midwest, which was her first ever bodybuilding competition. She took first place in the novice division, second place in the masters, and third place in the open She is coached by Robert Sykes, the Keto Savage himself, author of Ketogenic Bodybuilding, A Natural Athlete's Guide to Competitive Savagery, using the exact same contest prep strategy that I've been using for my entire contest prep, of which I actually happen to be on peak week. (laughs) So if I stutter a little bit here and there, it's because I'm a little off of my... a little bit off my kilter. <laughs> I imagine Dr. Uh, Seaman that you know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really, I felt it the couple of weeks right before. Otherwise, I felt great leading into it. But awesome. uh, yeah, I know what the, I know what the end is like. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got my copy of the book right here. And so we got a couple of questions um, based, based on that. But yeah, we'll be discussing lots about how we've been using the same nutritional approach in the sport of bodybuilding. So uh, Taylor, lots of our listeners and our clients, as well as myself, have been following Dr. Seaman throughout her contest prep, and we're so inspired. And we reached out to see if she'd be willing to share ex- her experience on our show, and she was, Lord willing, uh, g- generous enough to do just that. Dr. Seaman can be found on her show, The Fit and Fabulous Podcast, which is awesome. Taylor and I have been binging her show for quite some time now. Um, her website, drfitandfabulous.com. And her YouTube channel, Dr. Fit and Fabulous. She's also active on Instagram, of course, at Dr. Fit and Fabulous. And we will be adding the rest of her social media handles to the show notes. And you can follow her there for booking inquiries, OBGYN appointments, and nutritional consultation. Please check the show notes where you will find her contact information on all of that. Dr. Seaman, welcome to the supersetyourlife.com podcast. It's so wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. We're so excited. Yeah. <laughs> we could hardly sleep last night. We were so excited. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First question is from Michelle in Dallas, Texas. And she would like to ask what drove you to decide to compete? Well, I'll, I'll be really honest. I never in my life thought about competing. It wasn't anything, um, that, uh, it was not on a bucket list or anything like that, but you know, j- a little background of my story is I grew up as an athlete. So I love competing. Right. And I, you know, I thrive in a competitive environment. I think most athletes can, you know, resonate with that, yeah. but I, finished collegiate athletics and went to medical school. And there was a huge shift in my life. I got married. I had three babies and for all the moms listening, it really seems to kind of, you know, change your identity a little bit. You're finally, you know, starting to focus on keeping these other humans alive and, you know, thriving. And a lot of times we sacrifice our own well-being and health, you know, for our kids. And I am an OBGYN. So I watch moms do this all the time. And naturally in those first couple of years when they're small, um, it, it takes a lot of, of mental, physical, emotional resources from you. And so I went through this period of my life where I had three kids in about 56 months or something like that. <laughs> All my girls are 23 months apart. I have three children, but after the three pregnancies, um, you know, I was probably in the worst physical shape of my life, just physically watching my body, you know, change. I just, I felt like I was stuck in this body that was not mine. And I was still working out off and on, but doing a lot more low intensity type Pilates bar. I had stopped completely weightlifting. And this is after from being a three-time lifter of the year at Nebraska. So then after I was diagnosed with prediabetes, hypothyroidism, all of these things, I really kind of set out on this journey to fix my health because I felt as a healthcare provider, I really needed to be walking the walk 
for my patients, I shouldn't expect them to do anything I'm not willing to do myself. So my husband and I started cleaning up our diet. I started working out again in 2018. I started lifting weights again because I knew that muscle was so important. And although I had kind of said, oh, I'm going to avoid this the rest of my life, because as a woman, like I didn't want big quads. Like I didn't want, like, I finally was kind of in this time of my life where I wanted to like embrace my feminine side. But then I quickly realized that, you know, lifting weights, like I have three daughters and I don't want women to be afraid of looking strong. Like it is really hard. What most women say, like, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to you know, be bulky, like that takes an incredible amount of work. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a body, but like a bodybuilder woman, like a woman competing, like an actual, like bodybuilding class, like that takes years and years and years of titration and training to put on that amount of muscle mass. Most people, right. most average Joes and Janes that participate in some sort of regular resistance training, they're not going to look that way. They're just going to look healthy. They're going to have a, you know, a, a decent body composition, but, um, so, so fast forward to kind of, you know, really ch- starting to change my life from a nutrition and exercise perspective. It was actually my husband that was very much, much interested in 2020 in possibly competing in his first show. So I fully supported him through that in 2020, I was going through my own, um, competition. I was competing for Mrs. Nebraska Mrs. is America and had just come off competing at, at Titan games with Dwayne, the rock Johnson. So my plate was a little full. I didn't have the capacity to even think about prepping with him, but I was fully supportive and I watched him do it. And at the time we were very carnivore based in our diet and he made it look so easy. I mean, he literally (laughs) complained. He, I'd watched his body just like transform. And then, you know, of course I supported him at his first show and he did wonderful. He got third. Um, in, in the open class. Um, and he was against people who were seasoned bodybuilders had been doing this for much longer than, than he had. And that kind of just started to like, you know, tickle the senses a little bit, I guess you could say, I don't know. I wonder what it would be like. And I had always had kind of a bad taste in my mouth about bodybuilding because as a doctor, I have taken care of female clients that have done this in the past and they've destroyed their body. They've destroyed their hormones. They are mm-hmm. testosterone zero. They're amenorrheic. They're not menstruating. Right. And I thought, why would I ever, like, my goal is optimal health. Like, why would I ever want to put my body through, you know, that level of, you know, extremism? Yeah. So when I got to 2021, I thought, well, I, I'm just going to experience it. I want to do it, you know, myself to experience it. So I kind of started to think about it. And then, you know, Robert Sykes, Keto Savage, um, head coach, Ben, and he had actually attempted to compete in 2020, but then the pandemic hit and his show got canceled. So the poor thing had done this like entire prep and then didn't get to compete. Well, he decided to do it again in 2021. And, um, and so then finally in 2022, I said, okay, well, I'm going to do this. His coach wanted them to take a year off. So, um, in, I started prep January 1st of 2022 competed in mid April and, um, it was a very educational experience. Um, I really underestimated the posing, like you can <laughs> all of this work, but if you can't highlight, you know, your physique in certain ways, like there's so much more to the presentation side of it than I ever anticipated. You know, I always kind of had in my mind that it was just like dieting and exercise. Yeah. Um, And so I really started to appreciate it, you know, as almost like an art, you know, and the show that I was at, they had pro women's physique also competing at the same show. So I was just mind blown watching some of these women, you know, up on stage. And, uh, so it was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. I was basically carnivore keto type prep and, um, I'm thinking about competing again. I was just going to ask me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about this actually right before this podcast. My husband is going to compete in 2023 nice. and um, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do it with them or I don't know. I think it's, it'd be interesting to hear your perspective as a husband wife. Like it makes sense if one, if one person's doing it to have the other person eating, you know, the same things from a family perspective. Right. Yeah. But, um, but it's also very stressful. And so, you know, 
I don't know if it makes more sense to do it together or have one person just supporting the other and, you know, take an off year. I don't, yeah. <laughs> we're so we, new to this, but we've never um, done it together, but it's always been like a dream and I've never done a prep because I, you know, our daughter's only two years old. So I'm like now to the point to where I can think about trying to do one. And we, we, we asked Robert and Crystal that on, on, on our show and, and, and Crystal was just like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He, like I said, he literally, he never complained. He never, but there was a point during my prep, um, you know, with all the extra cardio and all the other things that I do that I, it put an an immense amount of stress on my partner. Um, just because of all the extra time, you know, that was required of me to like, you know, do cardio. And so there was a point that, that we butted heads a little bit, a couple of weeks out from the show. (laughs) I think, you know, your nerves and your temper can get like a little worn down when you're not eating a ton of calories. But I mean, he was kind of like pseudo prepping with me. Like, obviously he wasn't, you know, sitting there eating a pizza while I'm, you know, eating my food or whatever. Like we don't normally do that anyway. He was very supportive um, the entire time, but I think it, it does put a lot of stress, you know, on the family because there is extra training and. Yeah. I feel like there needs to be one person who's like stable. (laughs) And not doing it just to. Hey, like, are you saying that I'm not stable? No, but you know what I mean. It's 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 yeah. exhausting. I know exactly and, what you mean. Yeah, I just feel like it'd be really hard if we were both doing the same thing. Like, how would we keep up with our children? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't yeah. know. More power yeah. to people who. For do single it. people, you know, you can do whatever you want, but I yeah. think it, you know, as a mom or a dad, there's another level of you know commitment there For to. Sure support your family and, and still be able to do it. But I'll tell you what, and Robert and I have talked about this. Um, when I was prepping, I actually felt like when you have a strategic plan laid out for you, that's literally like eat this, eat this every single day, Mm -hmm. train this way every single day. It almost took so much decision fatigue off of me that I almost was less stressed prepping. (laughs) We're in the real world when, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mainly eat keto carnivore, right. And I do train very regularly, but like when you're not prepping, I think you fall to other influences, you know, your kids stuff, your work stuff so much easier. Whereas like when I was in prep, it was like non-negotiable right? and it actually was less stressful for me having it that way. Cause it was like, okay, here's the plan and just execute it. So I don't know. It's kind of, and my husband has said the same thing. He was like, I was actually less stressed prepping. <laughs> yeah, there's just no question about like what needs to be done because you already have the decision made. So it's like, you just got to follow the steps at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. hundred percent. That actually goes really nice and really nicely into the second part of Michelle's question here, which was, she asked, um, basically what she's asking is how do you communicate to uh, friends and family that are um, concerned about your health and, and, your, and your personal goals and they want the best for you, but they don't really know why you're competing and fully understand um, why this is something that's important to you. How do you communicate to yeah. that to people like why you're not eating carbs? Why well, well, first of all, I think that you need to understand that you don't have to explain yourself to anybody. Mm-hmm. that's, that's first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Um, you may feel like you need to explain yourself, but really at the end of the day, you know, what fulfills you and allows you to be the best human and, you know, feel and function in whatever capacity you want to, that's, you know, your choice at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, part of the reason that I even attempted the competition prep was because I wanted to know what it was like And also I wanted to know from a health perspective, if training ketogenically maybe is a healthier approach compared to using a lot of carbohydrates. And so I did pre and post labs during, um, during the prep. And, and I will say that, you know, at that low of calorie, like there were some changes at the end, um, that I think that you really need to be careful about how often you're competing and that you're giving your body a lot of time to like repair and regrow and, and those types of things, because it is an extreme sport on all levels where you're, whether you're ketogenic or not. But, uh, when Ben prepped, I did the same thing. I checked his testosterone levels and he maintained thyroid function. His testosterone levels looked great. 
I had a few more changes, I think that would be maybe, you know, perceived as negative. Like I did lose my cycle right before the show. Um, it came back as I added my calories back in, but I think women definitely as like a reproductive species are, are more susceptible to the, you know, extremism of the sport compared to men and our male counterparts. But I think that, um, you need to stop looking for external validation. You know, people want other people around them to do the same things as them because it validates what they're doing. Right. It's like, if you're low carb, like hanging out with low carb people feels really good. Cause we're all yeah. like we're all keto and like, we're all doing our thing. And it's really hard to go into social environments, maybe like where people are drinking and you're not, or people are eating pizza and you're eating your meat and eggs. But I think that's just, that's, that's social connection. Like we want to be validated by the people around us. And so I think that's one of the interesting things of prep is, you know, going into those situations and really just building confidence in yourself and discipline. And like I said, at the end of the day, like you don't have to explain yourself. If these are people that love and support you, they're willing to meet you at your level of interest and commitment. And there's going to be people that don't understand why you're doing it, or they think it's a vanity thing, or they, you know, and, and a lot of it comes out of their own fear and insecurities. And, you know, at the end of the day, you just ask yourself why you're doing it. And, and maybe there are people that are doing it for the wrong reason. And that's why they have a tough time feeling that judgment because, you know, I think we all have our own, you know, internal insecurities that, that we have to address. And I think perhaps sometimes probably brings a lot of those out. For sure. Yeah. It's very vulnerable. I mean, it's very vulnerable, you know? Um, you know, am I good enough? Am I doing this right? Am I, you know, there's just, there's a lot of, but I think growth is growth is created by friction. And yeah. there's a lot of mental friction that happens during, during a competition prep. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, would, would you like to ask Lucky's question from Alabama? Yes. Okay. So, um, Lucky would like to know your thoughts about HRT for postmenopausal women. I am a huge fan of hormone replacement therapy. Um, we're finding out now, you know, based on a lot of large trials that mostly the WHI, the women's health initiative, um, was what kind of scared a lot of practitioners away from discussing hormone replacement therapy with people. Um, because they said it increased the risk of breast cancer, increased the risk of stroke. Um, and so for years, uh, people didn't use it. We're kind of seeing the pendulum swing back the other direction because, there's no way with any amount of nutrition or exercise when a woman goes through perimenopause and through menopause for her hormones to turn back on. And we see some huge physiologic shifts that happen with the loss of estrogen. Estrogen is not only good for women, it's good for men. So for any men listening that like are on testosterone replacement therapy and taking estrogen blockers, um, there are ramifications of that men need estrogen too. But with the loss of estrogen, we see an increase in insulin resistance, an increase in oxidative stress, an increase in the incidence of visceral fat deposition, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and osteoporosis. So hormone replacement therapy can help mitigate the onset of these types of diseases. It's much better in prevention than it is at reversal. So the best time to initiate hormone replacement therapy is within 10 years of menopause. The difficult part for people in the bodybuilding world is that if you're competing in a natural league, um, hormone replacement therapy, even for postmenopausal women is considered a performance enhancing drug. So that is the really, um, tough pill to swallow essentially, uh, for, for athletes, not just bodybuilders. I mean, even Olympic athletes, um, they consider, you know, any amount of estrogen replacement therapy to essentially be you taking steroids. (laughs) So that's, I mean, that's just a, a, you know, really unfortunate truth, but I'm a huge fan of it, um, for the right patient and working with a provider that knows what they're doing. And it's only replacing to physiologic levels and not super physiologic levels because more is not always better. That can come with, with its own, you know, uh, set of risks, but I'm a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, touching back one thing before I, before I forget is you mentioned that, um, before your, before you stepped on stage that you had pushed your body hard enough to where you achieved the physique that you wanted with this ketogenic prep. Um, but you lost your cycle right before the show and got it back right after. 
uh, for, for, from, from a guy's perspective, from, from, from a coach's perspective, that it almost kind of sounds like you and Robert um, being your coach timed everything really perfectly because pushing yourself any past that would have been running your body into the ground. But I mean, you kind of figured out how to get that physique that you wanted that was perfect. I mean, like for all the, all the pictures that I, all your stage pictures that I just, that I saw, I was just like, Oh my goodness. She, she looks incredible just from, from, from every angle. Um, and, and for, and for you to only have that short period of suffering, um, reminds me of, uh, our uh, recent bikini client that we took through a show and she uh, exact same thing. She lost her cycle. She's uh, 28 years old, lives in Seattle, Washington, lost her cycle the week before the show and got it back like immediately after. So, yeah. And you have to remember too, that, you know, you can lose a cycle for a variety of reasons, but I think, you know, competition prep, you're talking about, you know, low calories, probably low nutrients. If you're eating low calories, you're probably not getting all the nutrients. Obviously you can have a really good supplementation strategy. Um, just the, the, the stress, just cortisol, just the stress of the prep at the end, um, possibly not sleeping well. I think there's just a lot of things that could cause you, you know, to lose it. Mm -hmm. And a woman's body is basically saying like, is this a good time to reproduce? And your yeah. body's saying, mm -hmm. no, there's too much stress of whatever kind it is, whether it's low calories or low nutrients or lack of sleep or, or whatever. Um, but it, it's definitely a sign that, you know, the body's under an incredible amount of stress and, um, you just don't want to be in that state for too long. So I think that, you know, exactly what you're touching on here is if you can, you know, strategically, and that was the great thing is when I, Robert actually, um, kind of prepped me in 2020, when I was competing for Mrs. America, obviously I didn't want to look like a physique competitor on stage, but I wanted to look nice. And so we actually went through a prep in 2020 for Mrs. America or 2021. And what's interesting is when you put the spreadsheets side by side, um, after Mrs. America, after I got back into the gym, started to like refeed train, you know, hard, my calories from 2021 to 2022, I was actually eating 400 more calories a day at the same point in the prep from one year to the next. So to be able to come into a prep and eat that higher level of calories for much longer and still get, you know, the results that you want, I think is so important. You don't want to come into a prep, like chronically dieting. Um, you want to come into a prep where you're eating lots of calories. You've got lots of good lean body mass because that's going to make your resiliency through the prep easier, better. I think, you know, from a like stress perspective, I mean, the lowest, my calorie, just for like reference, basically I started my prep at 179 pounds. My stage weight was probably like 145 to 147. Um, just for reference, I had never been below 160 in my adult life. So like these numbers were like rather mind blowing to me, but my calories, you know, even at the end, I think there was a couple days where they were um, just below 1400, but like leading into the prep, I mean, I started the prep at 2,300 calories, you know, which is great. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, when that's, I was, backstage, that's very high. I mean, when I was backstage, I was talking to girls that were eating like 900 calories. I mean, that's incredibly low. Yeah. And doing like two or three hours of cardio a day. Yeah. And so and, and taking clean butyrol and who else? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I competed in the league that where people could use stuff. And <laughs> I was like, oh my God, <laughs> when you are a natural competitor, it's like, well, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's specific, and it's specifically that one too. It's like that, that's, that's the one that's popular here where it's like, even at natural shows, people, just, people, people just take it cause they don't test for it. And, it, and, and it's like, I've taken it one time and I was up all night with leg cramps. I couldn't sleep. It gave me anxiety. I was like, why on earth would anybody take this? And I looked into the science and I'm like, it's not even a fat burner. It's just a stimulant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what a joke. Um, okay. So you went, so you started at 2,300. Do, do you mind if I, um, I mean, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think like, okay, we got some good questions, but like what, what you just said was like, oh, what? um, wonder if we, it would it be okay if I asked for, like some more specifics on your calorie yeah, and yeah, uh, for sure. Oh, wow. Okay. This, this, this is amazing. I can't believe I have the opportunity to talk to you about this. So, 
Uh, cool. So your calories started at 2,300. How, how low did they get? Yeah. I'm just pulling up my spreadsheet actually. Right <laughs> okay. so my, my calories started at 2,370. And um, when I got down to, let's see, we had a few refeeds in here. Let me get to show day. That was about an 18, 20 week prep. It sounded like. Yeah. So I got down to, yeah, about 12, 1260 the week before the show. And then like, looks like I had a refeed one day. So I got to bump my calories up to 1625 and then, yeah, then back down to 1260. And then shortly after the show, you refeed them. Sorry. was how many calories? Yeah. So my lowest calories was 1,260. That was the lowest I ever went. And that was for a couple days leading into the show and then had a refeed. And, and, the re- yeah. and, and the refeed, what, what, I, I, know, I know Robert doesn't go crazy on his refeeds. He usually recommends like a 30% increase in both. Fat yeah. And- basically it's an extra 500 calories. So my refeed, I got to oh. go up to 1,625. So, um, but really my calories were only at 1260 for five days, you know, and then I started to refeed after the show. So. That's nothing. Yeah. I was wow. still getting like a really good amount of calories. And I honestly yeah. didn't feel, I honestly didn't feel like, oh my gosh, this is low until I went to, it was three weeks out when I dropped to like 1450 and I was like, okay, this isn't a lot of food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just with the amount of cardio, like, I think if I was just, cause I have female clients that come into my OBGYN office all the time and tell me they're eating 1400 calories a day. Right. Yeah. Or like a normal person. But when you're training at that level and you're doing like all this extra cardio, like that's not a lot of food. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Well, p- people look at how much I eat too. And, and, and they're like, you eat like basically the equivalent of three, three, four pounds of steak a day, like while you're on prep. And I mean, that's quite a bit more calories than most people are eating. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I'm moving the entire day, man. Like I'm doing a lot of cardio. I'm doing a lot of lifting. And I would, I, I think Robert says it in, in, in his, in his book, he goes, you know, you basically got a choice. You, you have, you have a choice of, wait, no, that's uh, Cliff Wilson's book. Have you read uh, Cliff Wilson's book or? Um, uh, no, I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Cause he, I mean, he, cause he's not keto, but um, it, it, you know, you just got to make that decision. Do you want to do more cardio or do you want to cut right. back on calories less? Because yes, your approach is health first. My approach is also health first. And so Dr. Seaman, your mission and your message to the world is very similar to, to ours. It's, it's health first bodybuilding, right? Just like Robert says in his book, it's like the, the combination of resistance training and the ketogenic diet is probably like the closest thing to the fountain of youth that there is. Mm -hmm. But when, but when, but when it comes to, Mm -hmm. um, but, but when, when, when it comes to it, when it comes to a prep like this, um, that it's, it's, it's no different than having carbs in your diet, it's still bodybuilding and you're still pushing your body, um, further past health to the point of, 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 of an overarching purpose, something that yeah. you really, really want. I mean, I'd love to study it in some capacity. Cause I think, I mean, my theory just with my background is that the ketones become very protective to the brain at the end of prep. They become mm-hmm. very protective to the lean body mass. I mean, I have DEXAs, like I didn't really lose muscle like at the end, and you know, you're talking about a woman going from 179 pounds to 147 pounds and not mm-hmm. really losing lean body mass. Like that's amazing. Um, I mean, I lost a teeny bit, but I honestly am not Robert and I aren't convinced that it was actually muscle. There's, you know, depletion of glycogen that happens when ketogenic. And so on these scans, it could yeah. be perceived as loss of lean body mass. But, um, I, I think it's, it's a different physiologic approach. And I, I think that it's something that people should consider mm-hmm. yeah um it and, and this is this is the only this is the only um nutritional approach luckily that you've done because you haven't had to suffer and do it i don't have the comparison i mean i used to eat a lot of carbs but right um but i mean basically you know at the end you're pulling energy calories you're either pulling fat or carbs and you know at, at some point and fat is really important for our sex hormones, Mm -hmm. you know? And so if you have low body fat and you're eating low fat, I just think that's a really, really dangerous combination. Yeah. Yeah. All the shows that I've ever done before have all been with carbs. This is my first ever prep that I've done on, on basically an all meat diet. I've had hardly any vegetables, the entire prep. Um, but there's just, there's just no comparison. I feel 
10 times better, have not had the dip in testosterone that I did before because of all the saturated fats. It's, you know, as, as, as a natural athlete, you, um, having, having those fats is, is, is vital. And when, and when you, when calories are so, um, precious, (laughs) every calorie has to count as you know, and if, and your calories are either going to come from carbs, which are carbs good for you. We could talk about that all day. Are fats good for you? Uh, You will die if you don't have those. You won't die if you don't have carbs. You will die if you don't have fat. You will die if you don't have protein. So to, to have a diet that consists of only the bare essentials towards the tail end of a prep, just logically, yeah, no sense on top of that too. Yeah. Um, If you don't, if you don't mind me asking, how tall are you? Um, I am five. Well, I like to say I'm 5'10". I'm just shy of 5'10". <laughs> okay. 5'9 and a half, probably. 5'9 and three quarters. Right on. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just look, looking at your stats. And um, that's, gosh, that's, that's quite a bit of lean muscle mass <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for, 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 your, for your height. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, have, uh, I have quite a bit of muscle. And I mean, thankfully, I have a little bit of genetic potential, I think, probably. You know, I used to have PCOS. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I've been an athlete my whole life and I weight trained as a younger woman, which, right, like that's our peak, peak bone mass is in your teens, peak muscle mass, like, you know, is in your twenties. And so you want to use those years of your life to your advantage, you know, and, and put a lot of muscle on your frame and it's never too late to start. You know, if there's somebody that's listening, oh my gosh, I met people competing that like didn't get into bodybuilding until they were in their sixties or seventies. Like it was so cool to talk to this one woman, she had competed in like 10 shows, but you know, so it's never too late, but you know, you really want to use those early years of your life to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay. At at what point in the, I've been been dying to ask you this one. At at what point in your prep, did you look in the mirror and was it like the, was it peak week? Was it the morning of the show? Was it four weeks out? What, at what point did you look in the mirror and go, we did it we're ready. We're done cutting. I could step on stage tomorrow. Well, I think, you know, I kind of talked about the mental, you know, friction and mind games that happen. I think your body seems to make the most rapid changes like a couple weeks out. So when you're like a month or two out, you know, I kept looking at my body saying like, Oh my God, like, I don't, I don't know if we're going to get there. I don't know if we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's hard to just like stick to it and be patient knowing that like it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Um, but I had a posing session every week. So I'd meet with my posing coach every Monday. And it seemed like every time I would show up and put my posing suit on, I would see like little subtle changes each week. You know, I was like, Ooh, I'm really seeing, you know, striations in my delts this week or like, Ooh, my abs. That was where I really started. I like, my core was incredible. Like I've always like had what I would think like a thicker waist and just watching like my waist come in. That was crazy. Um, And, you know, my coach would always give me really good feedback about different poses. And, um, I think my legs were like the last thing to kind of start to lean out. And of course, like looking back at the pictures, you always could look for places of improvement. Like I think, you know, hams, glutes, quads, and women, like it's, it's a place where we hold, you know, more fat. My arm. Were were you holding, sorry to cut you off. Were you holding fat in all like areas of your legs or like, yeah, I mean, it was pretty like, you know, um, not spread out. What word am I looking for? I mean, it wasn't like there was evenly distributed. It was pretty like uniform. It was just like, God, I wish I, I wish my legs were like a little bit leaner. I definitely leaned out my upper body. Yeah. Um, and I have large legs. So that was another thing from a posing perspective is like my upper body was not as big as my lower body. So figuring out like how to pose so that it looked proportional, um, was also something I really had to like work on a lot. Um, but it's just incredible. I mean, you get to that week out from the show and I was just like, Oh my God, whose body is this? Like I never, (laughs) I was crazy. And even looking back at the pictures, like I'm still like mind blown. I think sometimes it's hard to like enjoy it in that moment because you're just so, you know, depleted. Um, but it's just crazy. Like what your body can do when you just are consistent. Yeah. And when you don't give it a choice, you, you look in the mirror and you say, this is happening. You know, it's like, I, I, I was, I was running every day. That was my cardio. So my, my legs got shredded like, like at the beginning of my prep and then in, injured, injured my foot. It's been injured for two months and 
doctor, doctor's orders, I can't run and probably won't be able to run for years now because of um, dropping an 800 pound piece of exercise equipment on my foot. Ah. That was, that was stupid. But, <laughs> well, and- but when you're, but when you're set on a goal that you, you're like, you know what, I don't, I don't, I don't need to run. I can go buy a bike. You know what? I guess I, I, I can do this instead, but, but you, ah. you think you, you figure it out. You don't give your body a choice. You tell yeah. your body what to do. And what's crazy is like people watch this transformation on social media and, um, they're like, Oh, tell me what you're doing. Like, tell me your secrets. And I literally was doing everything I've been doing for the past four years. Like I'm just eating keto carnivore. I'm weighing my food. I'm titrating down the calories. Like my calories only dropped. Let me pull this spreadsheet up. I mean, like 50 calories, basically like a week. So the first week I was 2,370. The next week I was 2,345. That's that's not many calories. So you're talking about, I mean, having to weigh your food. I mean, that's like one less bite with each meal. Yeah. And I think that's what people don't understand when they're so obsessed. Like, Oh, I just want to lose 10 pounds. Okay. You have to like, this is like titration. I obviously, I don't want to weigh my food for the rest of my life, but Mm -hmm. I mean, I went from 179 pounds to 147 pounds. Like, and I don't have a lot of, like, I'm not obese by any means. So I just think it really like highlighted for me, you know, that you can go up or down, but like it, it is a level of titration that a lot of people don't really like account for in their daily life. Mm -hmm. And you're referring to phase three, it sounds like where you're tapering the the macros down and after you've already established your protein threshold and everything. Yeah. Cool. That's a good way to look at it. It's just one less bite. Um, I mean, that's, that's true. Uh, what, what I found particularly helpful is whenever I want to cut back on calories, um, for, for me, it's very emotional. So if I know that I'm cutting back on calories, like uh, I, I, I have a history of eating disorders, binging, purging, bulimia, and um, the ketogenic diet has really been key in um, helping me get through that and just avoiding carbs altogether, because that was really uh, one of the roots of the issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but changing how you cook something when it comes to meat makes a world of difference. Just this last week has been eye-opening to Taylor and I um, literally weighing out how much fat drains out like okay we're gonna fry bake and let's drain it out and see and see what it weighs after and it's like twice as much of, of the fat comes out if you air fry it bacon so I'm like okay i can still eat just as much bacon as i was eating before but i'm just gonna cook it in the air fryer and holy crap it actually tastes better too it's like super crispy <laughs> yeah you really start to appreciate like the taste and the textures and you know the salt and the spices or, you know, like whatever you use, like it's, yeah, yeah it's a whole new experience when you're not just mindlessly like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like people feel bad for you and you can play a violin and you can look at the bad side of them and go, Oh no, I'm starving myself. Or you can look at it and go, you know what? Like food tastes different now. Like it, mm-hmm. like you're, you're hypersensitive to every single flavor that's in that food. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and all, all you need is salt, just like you said, Yeah, <laughs> Redmond real salt, right? Salt is my friend. Yeah. Oh, by the way, listeners, um, if you, uh, if, if you would like to purchase Redmond real salt, super good product, uh, Taylor and I use it on everything as well, as well as Celtic sea salt. We usually mix everything with one to one ratio. You can find those on our website, supersetyourlife.com as you know, but if you're listening to this episode, please do not purchase that off of our website. Please get it from uh, Dr. Jamie Seaman. She has a discount code, right? Yep. Dr. Fit, D-R-F-I-T. People okay. can get a discount on any other products. And they actually have some new, um, they have a taco seasoning, a Wasatch steak seasoning, and they have some new seasonings coming out that are like very clean, like no gluten, no fillers, no nothing. And uh, I love their products. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No, their, their website is great. Their customer service is amazing. It's a really, really cool company. So all you have to do is go to Redmond Real Salt's web, uh, website and, uh, and, and at your checkout, use Dr. Fit. That's the, that, that was our introduction actually to the product. So um, again, thank uh-huh. you for that. Yeah. <laughs> you're the one that, you're the one that turned us on to that. So uh, very much appreciated. One, one last thing on the, on the, on the numbers that we were talking about earlier. So I, I just was doing some calculations here and it, so, so it looks like you lost 30 pounds over the course of your prep, uh, about an 18 week prep. And so that comes out to, uh, 0.6 pounds of fat per week. Wait, no, excuse me. That would be, uh, a little, a little, about a pound and a half, about a pound and two thirds of fat a week that, yeah. you, that, that you lost. That seems 
that's that 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 seems kind of fast. I mean, that that that's faster than most of our clients um, lose. You know, I, I would pr- prefer to start someone on more like a a twenty four week plan if that was the case. But I mean, you you didn't yeah. know what your stage weight was going to be in, in any way. So, did you have a plan of like this is probably what my stage weight is going to look like, or did you just take it one day at a time and go? I don't know. I guess we got to lose five more pounds. I don't know. I guess we got to lose five more pounds. Yeah. I mean, I just kept saying like, you know, like you can't make your body, like your body's just going to do like (laughs) what it wants to do. But there were, I mean, there were weeks where like my weight did not go down. Like I expected it to, and it's hard to not, you know, play mind games with yourself and try to adjust things because the scale is not doing what you want. Like in women, like when you're still menstruating, I would get into luteal phase or follicular phase and, you know, you're retaining water in luteal phase. So it was like, it was hard to not, you know, like I said, play the mental mind games, but exactly. it was crazy. So basically where it really started to drop, like I wanted it to, but I mean, there were weeks that it like went up or like didn't move, but it looks like February, it really started to come down. And then, yeah, once we hit March and we were like a few weeks out is where it just started dropping like pretty rapidly. And then, yeah, towards the end, once we hit the first couple of weeks of April, it really, so it was like, I think the the hard work is that first month or two where you're just not seeing all the results right away. I think you're, it's like a prepayment for like what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> so you just have to stick to it and like, just trust, just trust the numbers, execute the plan mm-hmm. and let the scale do what it wants. <laughs> exactly. At the end, it matters what it looks like, right? Like, it's not like there's like, your weights like behind you on stage, like, Oh, she was supposed to hit this number and she didn't like at the end of the day, it's, it's all how you look. Right. Yeah. The, the only, the only reason I'm super concerned about my weight right now is just trying to get into the white, the, the right weight class and, and everything. Oh, Cause we don't have that for women. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, that is a difference. Mm-hmm. Of the seven phases did, are, are you through all of them now then? Because you must've already done the reverse diet and you're probably on like a lean bulk right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got back to maintenance. Um, we were able to titrate up, you know, uh, pretty quickly actually. And I, um, my current weight is kind of fluctuating between like 160 and 163 pounds, which is crazy because I started my prep at 179 and I'm back at maintenance calories, but at a much lower weight. So, um, some of the changes I think are kind of, I don't want to say permanent because nothing's ever permanent, but I just think that like each prep you go through, and this is, I've only done it one time, but my coach has told me that like each time you do it, like the results come a little easier and I don't know what your, you know, experience has been. So it'll be interesting if I decide to compete again this next year to kind of, you know, compare the two, cause I'm at, I'm starting at a lower weight, but I'm at the same maintenance calories. So I'm still eating, you know, a great amount of food at a lower weight. So it'll be cool to like, see what could happen. Yeah. Um, and, and you were asking what, what my experience was on reverse diets. I'm sorry. I was right. Well, just like from one prep to the next, like, do you feel like it came easier each time? Like was the first prep, like the hardest, like when you're uh, trying the, to like really dig into those fast stores? The first, the first, my first prep, I was, <clears throat> um, how can we politely say, <laughs> maybe pumping iron lean, like, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I was not shredded. I was, I was not um, near the conditioning that I should have been yeah. to, be, to be competitive, but I, I stepped on stage anyway. I'm glad I did it. Um, I was beat by competitors that were better conditioning. And, but I don't think anybody comes out like lean, mean, and shredded the first prep. I, that, that's like exactly what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Unless, unless you have a coach that knows what they're doing, but I was coaching myself and that was a problem. Did four shows that way, basically just gave myself an eating disorder and was lucky to be alive and then hired a coach, did four shows the following year and did very, very well with those. And it was just like you were saying, Dr. Jamie, um, having somebody take all the guesswork out of me was what I needed because when I was coaching myself, I just didn't know. I was like, oh, uh, this person says I can eat whatever I want as long as it fits my macros. Oh, uh, this person says that the paleo diet, yeah, that's the way it goes. So I was paleo for a while. And then I was like, oh, wait, no, this person says to do this. And then finally the carnivore diet, I'm like, I found, I found my way of life. I found it. This is it. And, and Rob, Robert's got the answer and here it is. And oh, wow, look at this. Dr. Jamie Seaman. She, she did it work for her. Wow. Robert did it work for him. I guess you don't need carbs to be a bodybuilder. Let me try this. And it's, and, and it's just, there's, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. I love it. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so of the of the seven phases, which one has been your favorite? Well, I mean, I like eating. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> What's funny though is like when I started refeed, um, like your your eyes and your brain are like oh my God, I can't wait to like eat that all. But it was just like, really honestly, like one bite of things that I didn't, you know, have during prep. It was just like really satisfying. Um, but yeah, no, I like eating. So like, I like being in a growth phase, you know, that's yeah. like, um, but maybe that's just because like, it's very comfortable. <laughs> so I, it'll be interesting. I'm yeah. I'm interested in, in thinking about competing again next year, because like I said, it was actually less stressful for me to like be in prep. So I think each phase has its pros and cons. Yeah. Do you, do you have any desire to do an NPC show? Because uh, I'm going to, because as we were talking about over DM, I'm going to be coming to your neighborhood to train, uh, to, to coach Mel- Melanie through her first ever bikini competition. She's a, she's a grandmother and she's like basically stage ready right now. She's been stage ready for the last uh, the, the last few weeks and she's on a high carb approach actually I'm, I'm not i'm not coaching her through a ketogenic approach i i, I um, actually personally don't you know personally don't believe that um the ketogenic is approach is necessarily optimal uh for everybody um and most of the competitors that we're training right now um i would say they're on a high they're they're on a meat-based diet um with a, with, with an adequate amount of healthy carbs um it's, it's what they prefer. It's what they're used to. And it's working great for them. Um, but when, but w- would, would you ever consider doing, uh, do, doing an NPC show just because I, I know that the one that she and I are doing that we're going to um, be in your area here in a few weeks. Um, I don't know. It would just be really fun to do the same show someday. So if you're doing one, I might. Yeah. Have to do well, the, the show one. I did last April was an NPC show. So I did the St. Louis. Oh, Pro okay. and yeah. So I competed NPC. I'm sorry. I, I, um, and I there is, I just assumed yeah. because it was Robert that it was a, that it was a drug tested one. But. No, we well we wanted to, but it just didn't work out with the dates because I was speaking at a couple conferences, and so oh. I actually did an NPC show. Um, my husband competed in NANBF, and that shows in May, and I believe he's going to do that same show. Um, if I wanted to compete again in NPC, we have a basically a June show and an October show, so you're coming out for the October show. Yeah. Um, which spring makes more sense logistically for our family to compete. So that's, um, so I don't know if Ben and I'll do the same show or if it makes sense to maybe spread it out a little bit and each do a different show. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see, but. Well, I will be stalking you um, on Instagram and, and please announce it whenever you do so that I'm notified. And, um, when, and then I'll keep that in mind too, because then that would be fun to, um, I don't know if we have, if, if you know, if, well, I'm, I'm sure Melanie is still going to be crushing shows around there. She says she isn't stopping until she gets her IFBB card. And so, oh. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I mean, she, she's gonna, we might just f- fill her out and, sh- and shoot for another show in the spring too. And we got lucky too. the lady that just asked that question earlier. She, that's probably going to be um, around the time that she's ready to, she's on a lean carnivore, uh, carnivore bulk right now, not a keto bulk, but a, a very high protein um, carnivore bulk that, that we have a protein on. It's kind of my favorite way to bulk personally. So. Love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible to meet people at these shows and hear their stories. There's really young people, really old people and like everything in between. And um, that was, that was a really fun part of the experience for me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't wait to meet you in person. This is going to be so fun. When like, I'm, 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 to- I'm totally making the, 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 the 30 minute drive away from the car. Well, I think Robert's competing next year too. So we joked that we're like, yo, we all, we should like all do the same show. <laughs> yeah. He, he keeps wanting so. to do the same one as me. And I was like, yeah, but I, I don't want to be on stage with you. <laughs> I, 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 I want to win. <laughs> yeah. He's a good guy. He's a good yeah. guy. He is. Well, we'll, 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 we'll coordinate, um, when, when we'll, when, when Melanie, I'll, um, Melanie and I'll come stop by and see you and everything at, at, at your convenience after we're, um, you know, off the air and everything. So I can let you get on with your, love it with your, with your labor day. And, and, and we're on, we're, we're on your time by the way, too. Cause I mean, I could ask questions all day and, and, and we got a list of them. So if you, um, you know, if, if you, if you got to go great, if, um, um, just gonna keep asking questions in the meantime <laughs> yeah we'll have to do round two yeah i'm gonna get my kids to the pool this is probably the last day we get to swim this summer so yeah yeah our both both of our kids are our fishes uh fish fish 
fish is fish both of our kids are fish i'm on peak week okay um, <laughs> brain is slowing down <laughs> yeah jonathan griffiths i don't know if you've uh if you're familiar with who this gentleman is but it seems like all of us carnivore bodybuilders seem to know who each other are in this community because there's not a lot of us but we're, we're we're growing and there's um it seems to be the way of the future for for natural bodybuilding anyway but um jonathan griffiths from the united kingdom we've had him on our show a couple times actually he would like to ask um does does anyone else get dreams of eating of, of eating beef? Like, do you do you, do you have do you have weird dreams around around your food? Like, you wake up in the in the in the middle of the night and you're and you're, and you're just craving craving something goofy. We all have stories like well, this. Well, actually, when I prepped for Mrs. America, which wasn't like bodybuilding prep, like I said, I as my calories got low, I got horrible insomnia. <laughs> so there was not a lot of dreaming happening. Um, but this prep, I actually slept really well. Um, I have dreams, but I don't ever dream about food like ever. Um, that's interesting. No, I really don't. That's just like my honest answer. I don't usually dream about food. (laughs) Right. I've had patients though tell me that they do, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think dreams are fascinating. Like what's your brain telling you? (laughs) Right. Yeah. And I, I, I used to, I used to have dreams, um, just w- wake waking up thinking that I b- binge ate because because that used to be something that I did. Oh yeah, for sure. I would have a dream that I did and woke up like no, and then I was like, wait, no, that was a dream. Okay, cool. We can go on with the rest of the day. You know, <laughs> um, Megan from Dallas, Texas, would like to ask, how has opening your gym been going? Yeah, so we opened um, a first of its kind facility called Upgrade Performance Institute here in our town. It's in like super West Omaha, but it's very different than a traditional gym. So we have equipment called e-gym equipment, which basically I call it the Tesla of workout equipment. It is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to get people involved in a resistance training program that have no idea what they're doing or they're very intimidated by doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, because it basically sets the training for you. So it sets the weights, it sets the repetition. It takes you through the timing of the eccentric and concentric contraction. And so it is a machine. It's not free weights. It's all magnet technology within the machine. And so, um, clients come in, we set them, you know, their flexion extension points on all the machines and we set their body composition and we set their training schedule, but then they basically come in and scan in and just go from machine to machine. We've got 14 machines. We also have connected cardio equipment where we can help titrate up somebody's VO2 max score. And then we've got our DEXA scanner. So we're able to objectively track their body composition changes. So it's really, really a cool space. It's really pretty inside. If you get to see it when you come out, Um, it looks like a Mercedes Benz car dealership. It doesn't look like a like clanky, sweaty, you know, gym with like (laughs) people doing Uh. bicep curls in the mirror. Um, and then we've got some IV therapies. We do peptides and and health coaching and those types of things. So it's been great. Um, it is successful in our, by all standards, it's been open a year now. Um, we are looking into expansion, other locations, franchises, those types of things, but we really want to you know, prove the model first essentially. And so stay tuned. We, (laughs) we've been having some business meetings about, you know, if upgrade may grow outside of Nebraska into other locations. So we'll, we'll see. It's fun. Um, May I, may I please ask your kind permission to, while I still have my uh, competition tan and everything. And while Melanie is looking amazing with her competition tan, um, we'll make sure that we don't get tan on any of your <clears throat> state-of-the-art equipment. Um, would it be okay if we came in on Sunday and shot some videos and uh, use those as training videos for our YouTube channel? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can come check it out. And um, we have a lot of actually competitors um, who come do DAXAs, you know, before their, before their shows to kind of see where things are at. So yeah, you guys should come check it out. Okay. It's a date. We are doing that. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, I'm going to have my service dog with me too, Zion, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Australian Shepherd. Yep. All right. Um, okay. Got it. So I got a question that I'm dying to ask you about um, tracking electrolytes. And I don't know if maybe this should be uh, part two, um, if, if, and, if and when we have the opportunity to have that conversation, or if now would be a, um, a, a good time for me to ask that one by chance. Yeah. So 
um, my coach basically likes a two to one ratio of sodium and potassium. Mm -hmm. So during my prep, um, I would do a scoop of relight with my workouts. So electrolyte supplement that's already two to one, but I would usually add, I take, a the, bit more. I take the same one. I take four scoops throughout the day, actually. Sorry to yeah. cut you off, but I just wanted to, um, but I would add more liquid potassium to it because I salt my food later. So just yeah. to keep that two to one ratio. Um, is essentially like what we did. And then, you know, a lot of people in traditional bodybuilding do a lot of electrolyte or water manipulation at the end. And my coach doesn't really do that on the refeeds. We do bump up the sodium on the refeeds, but, um, you know, basically, um, it's a lot different than a traditional approach of like trying to like dehydrate and pull the water out. Um, it's not as extreme, you know, from a dehydration standpoint, the, the type of prep that Robert and I did. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you know of curiosity, what your total, uh, sodium and potassium actual numbers were? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but or how, much, or how much you weighed out throughout the day. Like, don't you weigh it out? And then that, like, that's the salt that that's, that's how much salt you get to eat for the entire day. Yeah. So I would use like the Redmond mini shakers. Um, cause I, I want to say like my sodium intake was, I, it was probably close to like a gram or two of potassium and like two to four grams of sodium. So like I said, that two to one ratio, but I would usually use those mini shakers as like, uh, that was my, my salt for the day. Make sure I emptied out that shaker, you know, throughout the day. Okay. So that's a thousand, uh, a thousand milligrams of potassium basically and 2000 milligrams of sodium. Yeah, it was higher than that, but, um, I can't remember like the highest or lowest we got, but basically we tried to keep it consistent from where I started on prep down to the end. Yeah. Okay. Cause, cause right, cause right now I, throughout my prep, I've been around uh, that. I, I, I've been having a hard time getting my potassium up. I'm just being completely honest now. So, did, yeah, so, so did, I, yeah. So I usually, cause I, you know, I wasn't really doing avocados and fiber and things like that. He doesn't like a lot of that. Um, so I have some liquid potassium from, um, upgraded formulas. And so I was able to just, you know, add some uh, extra potassium only to, you know, like my electrolytes. Right. Were, were you, so, so when you, when you're, when you're, um, throwing out ballpark numbers of, um, two, two grams of, um, uh, of, of sodium and one gram of potassium is that. Is, is that only supplementation or is that factoring in the natural potassium and sodium that is in the uh, dietary foods that you're consuming? Right, right. So food's going to have its, you know, contain its own amount too. So I ate a lot of the same foods to keep those numbers consistent. You have to. Um, I mean, you have, yeah, you have to. Um, and so, like I said, I can't remember exactly what my numbers are, but like from a medical perspective, like ketogenic people, if you're training, if you're in like a hot location, like if you're, if you're sweating a lot while you're doing cardio, I mean, there are some people that could have sodium requirements in the like four to seven gram range. So like if you're doing four scoops of relay, like I think you said, that's four grams of sodium and two yeah. grams of potassium. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and most time, most days I do two scoops. So, I mean that right there. So I'm definitely doing more than two grams of sodium because that's just two grams right there in my shaker. And then I've got the salt on my food and, and the sodium and potassium content of the food. But most people who are ketogenic and training at the level you are, are going to need four to seven grams of sodium. And then, you know, that basically equates to two to three grams of potassium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'm consuming about four times as much sodium and potassium as, um, as, as the numbers that you were just describing, I'm just pulling up my Excel spreadsheets right now because I'm, I'm tracking everything and um, notice that um, avocados in particular seem to have like pretty much every single even meat beat because I'm, I'm not a yeah they're a great potassium content yeah I'm 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 not I'm not like a, uh, a a cult follower of the carnivore diet or anything I'm just like okay what what works does it make sense to eat an avocado does it make sense to eat this and 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 I think that. I think the avocados are a big exception to the rule. It's, I mean, it, 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 it really, it really has been, um, for me, a great way to get potassium and it's delicious yeah. too. And it, and it goes, it, and it pairs great with like any meat, you know, like towards yeah. the prep it, you just, you don't need to make guacamole out of it or nothing. Just like grab the avocado, put some, put some damn Redmond sea salt on it or Redmond yeah. real salt on it. And it, 
it just goes great with meat, you know? <laughs> I love avocados. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for, thanks for asking, uh, for, for answering that question. I was, I was curious. Um, do, do you, okay. So when you cook your, 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 meat, your meats that you're eating on your prep, um, I'm assuming that you don't put any salt on that because then that messes up the salt that you would use in, in your, um, in your, in your, in your, in your shaker to be able to adequately track. Right. And so. You... Right. Yeah. So we would typically Ben and I would just put them in our glass containers you know, weigh them out. And then when it came to like, you know, if he wanted sauerkraut or mustard or whatever on his, then he would put that on after so that we just knew each container had, you know, however many grams or ounces of beef. We did a ton of ground beef because <laughs> it was just the easiest way to like keep things really consistent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, it is Labor Day. We do respect your time. We are honored to have been able to have this conversation with you. Seriously, this has been a dream come true. And uh, I'm so glad that you were able to squeeze this into your schedule. I'm just ab- absolutely, absolutely honored. Um, two, two more just real quick questions to, to wrap up, if that's okay. And then um, I, I just want to make sure that you have plenty of time to go spend with your family at the pool and everything. Um, first one is your, um, is, is, is your, is your faith. I've heard you mention your, your, your faith on your podcast a couple of times. And I'm just curious if that has had an aspect in your, in your, in, in your prep and been something to where you've, um, just kind of had to, ha- had to go, you know what, I can't do this, God, I need your help. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I think, I think everybody connects religiously on, you know, different levels and it means different things to different people. For me, you know, spirituality is, is kind of the ripple effects that you leave, you know, amongst people. Um, we, um, having kids, you know, like attending church and things like that have, has been, you know, more difficult with the life that we lead, but we are both, you know, followers of, of Jesus Christ. And, and, uh, I think there are times in your life where you feel like you're not in control. <laughs> um, for anybody that's read my book in 2016, I had a horrible, or excuse me, 2015, I had a horrible tragedy that happened in my life where, um, one of my best friends was, um, taken off this earth, uh, very unexpectedly in the middle of her pregnancy. And that was a pivotal moment where I started to, you know, question God and question my career and question being a mom. Um, because, it didn't make any sense. Um, she uh, was completely healthy, um, very, very spiritual, you know, religious background. And, um, it, it didn't make sense that she only got 29 years. And, um, on the backside of that though, I think with, you know, tragedies, you can let it destroy, you know, your faith, you can let it destroy your life. Um, or maybe there was a reason and a purpose and the dedication of my book was to her, um, and to her family. Basically, you know, she taught me more in death than she did in life. And it really, for me, gave me this, you know, sense that we're only, you know, physically on this earth for a certain amount of time. And we only have a certain amount of time to, to, to make that impact. And that's why I'm here doing this, you know, each and every day. And I'm so grateful for every day that I have. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and look at the person that it's made you into, you know, it's, it's, it's never like, you feel like you're out of, you, you feel like it's not in your control. Well, yeah, it's because God's in control. And then you look back and you're like, Hmm, your plan was actually better all along. And just like, just like a bodybuilding competition, it's there's, there's struggles, there's challenges and look at the person that it turns you into. Yep. Absolutely. Last, last one is on um page <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read a quote from robert's book uh on page 37 he says my why is simple i want to create a self-imposed hardship that i can chip away at every damn day for, for the purpose of self-discovery gen and i genuinely believe that body vi- that bodybuilding is the ideal vehicle for learning your capabilities and understanding your limits. Nothing embodies the core values of patience, discipline, persistence, and the work ethic like the sport. If you master this sport, by definition, you master those character traits. Those traits then bleed into every area of your life. 
and everything begins to flourish. Bodybuilding has become my life hack for being a better person. <laughs> so that being said, um, Taylor and I, when we started this podcast 100 episodes ago, our first episode, we talk about how supersetting your life is what is what our our mission is our message to the world is to use the gym to use bodybuilding to make you a better person not to be vain not for a plastic trophy for something that that changes who you are that 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 gives you that discipline that um like a like it, like a Navy SEAL might get from, 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 from their training, you know, and I'm not putting, I'm not saying that we're on their level by any means, but uh, superset your life. That's, that, that's, that's what our show really stands for. And the message that we really feel called to communicate. I'm curious, has, ha, have, have you experienced the same type of discipline, self-improvement and capacity in your relationships has this made you a better doctor has this made you a person overall this experience going through the going through your contest prep yeah I mean you think about things that people most people are not willing to attempt right Mm -hmm. um and and bodybuilding is definitely one of those things um you know you brought up like navy seals when you look at people who actually can, can complete buds training right one of the most difficult physical mental challenges that most, you know, humans would ever (laughs) sign up for. Yeah. It's not the strongest person. It's not the smartest person. It's the person that basically has no quit that has the utmost amount of resiliency in what they can endure. And I think that that's what the sport of bodybuilding kind of encompasses, you know, you, you still have to have a job. You and I both have families. How do you, do this consistently day in and day out, because it's not one of those things like where you just do it for, I mean, it's like, it's a, it's a year long process, like leading into, you know, a competition season. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think you learn a lot about yourself. I think it exposes your weaknesses and excuses. And I think once you start to realize where, where you fail, you can start to prepare for those areas, you can start to improve those areas. Like if you just only competed at things you were good at, like you would never, you know, discover growth. And so I think it is a great sport to kind of, you know, make you a better human, essentially, obviously, you know, you may not compete for the rest of your life, but I still think there's a lot of value in the process. And um, what's interesting for me is I even talked about maybe prepping next year, but not stepping on stage, like, because I do think it adds a level of of value to my life. Like I said, I actually was like less stressed, like going through it. Um, So I think there's, you know, something that everybody could learn, you know, even just trying it once. Mm -hmm. I I, I hear this all the time. Oh, I could never look like that. Oh, I could never step on stage. Oh, that, that could never be me. And why would you sell yourself short like that? Is, can, can everybody be Mr. Olympia? No. Can everybody become a WNBF pro? I don't know. Probably not. What do they say? The best thing you can do in this sport. I hate saying it because it's out of your control, but there's a lot of truth to it. You got to pick the right parents. You got to have the right genetics. <laughs> um, but this is, this is what I believe. Do you believe this too? I believe that ev- I believe that anybody, regardless of your genetics can step on stage, do very well at a bodybuilding show be in the best shape of your life, have a six pack, get shredded, regardless of your genetics, regardless of what's happening in your life. Um, And regardless of whether you're actually ever Mr. Olympia or look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think that everybody can have the physique of their dreams and the the way that that, that they were really designed um, to look. Yeah, a hundred percent, because I'll tell you, after going through that first show, like your time on stage is so quick like it's so fast and um to think that you like put in all of this work for just this like 60 seconds like of glory like that's not why you're doing it like that's you know you're going to show up that day and it depends on like who you know there is a level of subjectivity in the sport right Mm -hmm. and so but at the end like you get those results like you did that work like it and that's why i'm saying like i could even prep and not even step on stage and compete because like and, and it sounds silly. I mean, people always say like, it's me against me. It's me against me, but it like, but it truly is at the end of the day. And it's really 
pushing yourself to a place where you've never been. Um, you know, it's like the, the biggest growth in the gym happens the rep after the rep where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like that is the exact moment, like where you get growth. And so, um, I, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, I was at a Tony Robbins seminar a few years ago and he goes, okay, you're doing bicep curls for 10 reps, which rep gives you the biggest bang for your buck. And everybody was like 10. And he goes, no, not 10 rep number 13. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. Well, cool. This has been an absolute pleasure. I'm, I'm going to um, please ask you to go have fun the rest of the day. Um, it's, 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 it's Labor Day. Enjoy the time with your family. Thank you again so much. Um, gosh. And I cannot wait to come see you seriously. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to, we're going to meet in person here just in a, in a few weeks. So awesome. Yeah. Well, safe travels and um, happy holiday weekend to you and your family. Wow. Was that an amazing interview or what? Oh my gosh. It was so good. Okay. So this is the moment everybody's been waiting for our celebration of Woohoo! 100 episodes. 100. That's a lot of talking. I know. That is a heck of a lot of talking. Okay. So we got some giveaways. I understand. Would you like to grab the deltoid desolator? Yes. Attached, please? This is the first giveaway. Woohoo! And the, the second two are actually going to be free, but this first one is going to be a, a buy one, get one free because these still are still free. Yeah. I mean, it's still free. It, th these are very time consuming for me to make and I don't know, whatever. I don't have to justify it, but uh, we, we make these, we invented them. We make them out of our own home and it is an extra long cable attachment. If you are not familiar with what this crazy looking thing is, if you look nice and close at it, it's teeth actually are the same as my teeth because um, one of our clients was kind enough to uh, custom sculpt it to the shape of my face. Anyway, not your face, your teeth, just my teeth. Your face does not look like that. Yeah. He's big ass canine teeth. God, <laughs> God knew that I love steak. And so he gave me some really big canine teeth so that I could chew it up better. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a long cable attachment and uh, you can hit your rear delts 10 times better with it. It looks badass, And um, you will, it, it is the best cable attachment you will probably ever use at the gym. I stand by it. Um, and, a lot of uh, people stand by it. Yeah. Yeah. They've kind of been taken off. So it is called the deltoid desolator cable attachment. The reason we called it that is because it desolates your deltoids. It was made specifically for the shoulders. I got so sick of judges telling me at bodybuilding competitions that, you need to have better shoulder development. And so I was like, you know what? Okay, let's make something that's going to be a better tool to better hit the shoulders. <laughs> so yeah, you get better range of motion on them. Um, face poles are kind of what we designed them for upright rows. You can use them for triceps. You can use them for your lats. Um, I mean, basically the sky's the limit. Freaking Robert Sykes has come up with, um, with, with a really cool uh, skull crusher variation. I'm like, oh yeah, skull crushers skull uh skull bells baby so <laughs> okay so to be able to claim any of these prizes well we'll get to that next so the second prize is this one this one is totally just free we're just giving this away a t-shirt woohoo skull bells t-shirt says skull bells on the front says supersetyourlife.com on the back and if you go, if you go to supersetyourlife.com you can see what the t-shirt looks like under our merchandise tab um, and there's a video that shows the sizing on it too. So if you're not really sure what your size is, then that uh, video that's embedded in our website will give you a rundown and an idea of what, what size would be best for you. And the last one in honor of Selena from episode 99 of our show, our most recent show, we thought that it would be appropriate to give away a free Celtic sea salt. Mm -hmm. So um, we're just going to need your address to be able to do that. Um, okay. Now, to be able to claim these prizes, you just have to do two things. That's all we're asking to be able to claim your prize and first come, first serve. So once the first prize is gone, it's gone. And I'm sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. How to win. First, first one is to, uh, first thing you need to do is subscribe to the channel. If you are already subscribed, 
great. Then just comment below and say that you've been subscribed. And uh, is this on YouTube? I'm gonna say thank you even more. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. Our YouTube channel, Skull Bells TV. It's all one word. If you're listening, S K U L L B E L L Z T V. Skull Bells TV. All one word. That is the name of our YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, then great, you're already there. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. And then uh, the second step is to comment your feedback and claim your prize. That's it. Your feedback could be anything. It could be, I liked the interview. It could be, you know what? I think that plants are healthier than meat. And uh, <laughs> I don't like anything that you guys just said on that show. Or I don't think that bodybuilding is healthy. Or I don't like that you were talking about Jesus. Or I don't like that you smoke marijuana whatever it is, if, if there's something that you don't like about our show, I don't like the way that your dog looks, your dog's in too many videos, hey, hit me, I don't care. Whatever your feedback is, it'd be nice if it was positive though. Yeah, we gave him way too much ammo right there. I gave him way too much ammunition. Though. Should we edit that out? Yeah. Nah, screw it. Screw <laughs> it. There's no, I don't have time to edit that out. Okay, uh, so comment your feedback and, uh, and, and claim your prize. So we'll just be taking a close look at the comments and here we go. First come, first serve. Yeah. Good luck. And then we got to celebrate. What are, what are we going to do to celebrate, babe? Sleep. <laughs> that would be no. nice. We've been trying to get a date night in for the last... Like five days. Yeah. Every single night. It's like, okay, today's date night. Okay, today's date and night. And our date okay, nights aren't even something night. spectacular. We just like to watch just a eating Star steak, Yeah. Eating steak and watching Star Wars together. That's all that we want to do. But We're so nervous. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, Robert and Crystal Sykes, the keto savages, the, the the people that really laid down the groundwork for this contest prep that we owe a lot to, um, they've they they they've they've just put out a roadmap for what our family is doing um, with our business. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're 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 incredible. But um, a few podcasts ago on their show, they said, what did they say? How they were up until two and three o'clock in the morning on peak week making keto bricks and what do we tell each other when it's midnight and we're still working we're like it's robert and crystal sykes robert and crystal sykes <laughs> if they can do it we can do it if they yeah. can do it we can do it so anyway robert and crystal if you're listening to this episode thanks so much i'm excited to get on your show brother here after this competition i'm honored to come back for a second interview so thanks so much for that I'm talking to them like he's here I think that's pretty much it. Anything we're forgetting, Ben? I don't think so. No, nah, it's been it's been it's been a good episode. It's been a good it's been a good hundred episodes. And just thanks everyone for the support. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously, this is a big milestone. And uh, two years. Yeah, we got a hundred more of the of the same content coming up. Next one is going to be on supplements. It's going to be all. It's going to be with uh, Jay, the CEO and founder of Metabolic Nutrition. So you are not going to want to miss that one. It's going to be motivating. It's going to be inspirational. Of course, like all of our episodes are, it's going to be, um, it's going to be jam packed full of, a, of, of a, lot, of a lot of science because a lot of these products that, that, that I take, he invented, um, he's a low carb guy himself too, dog lover and uh, Jesus lover. I mean, like we basically have everything in common. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were kind enough to sponsor me through this show too. Yeah. You know, paying for my entrance fees and uh, just a good guy, good company. Everything that they have is made in the USA. So make sure you stick around for episode 101. Make sure that you go give Dr. Uh, Jamie, go give Dr. Jamie a follow. Thank you again, Dr. Jamie, for being on our show. I think we can call it a wrap. Yep. All right. God bless y'all. Have a good one. Bye. Go crush your workout. Bye-bye.